is they they did commercial free for the first hour. And thankfully, because I don't want them to take commercials during the bloodline segment. And this way it could go 35 minutes from beginning to end without any interruptions. But <sighs> the the rock comes out and the people go crazy, and you can assassinate his character in a second. But they cheer and they chant Rocky. And they go, because he's a movie star and he's the biggest wrestling star and he's in their midst and it's Brooklyn, right? But then they've, and you've talked about he's doing so much babyface stuff and the people like it. He did a heel promo here. They like him, but they worked this thing to the point where the people are interested enough in the, in the story that they, they will boo the rock whenever he knocks Cody or the Cody crybabies. And so Cody still has some life. It, and, and also part of them, I'm sure, are working with this a little bit because they know what the responses are supposed to be, but they're interested enough to work with it instead of sitting there on their fucking hands like they've done for so long for so much stuff up there, like we have too. And he does the heel promo, I made that boy bleed. And he's so quick that when they what him, he can make it fit and he can get a boo at the end. So, and, and you can tell that Rock is loving this. He loves, he knows the field is wide open. This is goddamn, this is Sir John Gielgud in a high school play at this point, right? And he's having a ball. He showed the video on, what is the, the video thing the kids do? Chit chat? TikTok? TikTok, yeah, whatever it is. Well, they showed video of kids crying over him beating up Cody, and he got shit bleeped twice, and <clears throat> I, ju I just enjoy it because it's nice to be able to, if they're, if they're only going to show us talk, and that's what they've been doing for quite a while, at least now they got a bunch of talkers. And 15 minutes in, he does the finally, the final cut boss has come back to Brooklyn and he didn't come alone. And now we get Roman and Paul and Jimmy and Solo. Sounds like a Beatles tribute band. But they come in and Roman does a great promo. Where his family above all, I'll do anything for the for family. And he thanks The Rock for, you know, for what he did and putting this whole thing together. And they're going to smash the fools in the tag match. And they're going to have their way with Cody on Sunday. And, you know, just unobstructed promos from two of the biggest stars in the in the business on the show this coming weekend. The shows, plural, this coming weekend. And I like, Roman gave him a little bit for the, for the smart fans. He said, you know, when we all started making wrestling cool again a few years ago, Cody was off doing a whole lot of nothing. But when he saw what I was doing, he wanted to be involved. It's and so interesting they keep. It's so interesting they keep going back to that phrase because when AEW was first announced, that was the phrase they were using. Yeah, <laughs> wrestling is cool again. Well, and and it was very prophetic because I can't think of a cooler wrestling promotion that has cooled off any more <laughs> than AEW. So you you see they're they're calling these shots, and one would think that when he said you know. He talked about Cody, it would be Cody's music, but it was Seth's music. And here comes Seth Franklin Rollins to the ring. Well, not to the ring, but he comes out from the stands because he's, that way you got to fight all of Brooklyn if you're going to attack me. And he was more serious than usual here, which you got to be in this situation. with the, He's working with The Rock, and this is the WrestleMania main event. So he's still doing the, the drawl and that Seth freaking Franklin, whatever the fuck does, but he was more serious. And this is when he's good. And, you know, basically the talk is over. They, they crossed a line last week and he made a challenge for that night. Brooklyn one-on-one -on -one, Seth versus the rock. And it got a big pop. And he said, or it could be me and Roman. Got an okay pop. 
And he left it up to pick it, pick the stipulation, pick the one who's got the balls. And the fans are chanting Rocky, Rocky. And again, why not? My God. You mean we get to see Rocky wrestle and advertised, but in the Rocky responds, well, you, you don't want any of any of me or any of Roman. And Solo steps up. Yo, Seth, you ain't fighting them. You're fighting me. And it was kind of a a light spreading of letdown booze. Did you hear that? It was like, ah, ooh. Because let's face it, you know, poor Solo in that position. They'd rather seen their mother hooked up to a machine than see Solo instead of the Rock and Roman. But anyway, and then Rock added that it was bloodline rules. And they did 35 minutes, and they promoted the not only WrestleMania, but the main event at the end of the show uh, to, and you know, you just know something's going to happen later on, don't you? But that was a quest. That was a pitch back to me. That's what that was. That, that, was, a, that was a question yeah. that was being asked to you. <laughs> I didn't Mr. realize. Soli, huh? Mr. Soli. Well, thank you very much, Jim. Did, did, then, did, uh, I, did I ever tell you that the one time uh, the, the, we were pre-taping the TBS show on Sunday night, but it was a, a, a weekend where there was going to be a pay-per-view that night, So in, and Jim Ross was going to be on color, so he couldn't be in Marietta at, at 6.59 p.m., and fucking wherever at 7 p.m. So they had me and Gordon Soley do the commentary on the taped TBS show. And I'm thinking, this is great. I get to do commentary with Gordon fucking Soley, right? And if this was 1989 or 90 or whatever, but he still had the voice. He wasn't that motivated. Might have been imbibing a bit. But me and Gordon Soley is great. So the very first match, <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I can't remember what it was. But I asked him a question, and it was within the, the realm of commentary. It was like, well, Gordon, have you ever seen a uh, you know, move like that in your years? Or whatever the fuck it was. It was just an innocuous question in commentary. And he gave me the side eye and just kept going right on talking about whatever was going on. And then when we finished that match and went down in, in black for the break, he said, don't ask me questions. It throws me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got along with Freddie Miller so well. Yeah. <laughs> he said nothing. So I, I, the rest of the show, I didn't ask him any questions. And he didn't tell me any lies. But anyway, the, the announcers came out of this segment with why would Seth Rollins offer this seemingly right before these you know big matches this weekend, seemingly dangerous Offer for Seth, why would he do this? So we know something's going to go on. Your your comments. Can't add too much to what you said. Excellent segment. The Rock was great. The a bloodline. Just the feeling. It all felt real major league. And uh, it sticks in my head because I just watched Dynamite. But <laughs> it felt just like such a big deal. The crowd was eating it up. Even the Rollins thing, as lame as it was, the energy in the room, it felt like a big deal. You knew did more you, did, you see, did you see the one guy trying to get on camera when Seth is in the stands and surrounded by the fans? The one guy was trying to, well, I think he was trying to take a picture, but he went down in front of Seth and you see him holding his phone up or whatever. You see this guy in the black security guy, he runs past Seth and yanks this guy. Don't get the fuck out of here <laughs> so they can take the shot. But great opening segment. And and it's it's happy it's again when you look at this and you're just the average person, which is who they're appealing to now. They've got their audience hooked, but they want everybody to watch WrestleMania. You see this big building in Brooklyn with fifteen thousand people in it, this network production, and all of these people are going batshit over what's going on with these talents and in the ring or on the microphone or whatever. And if if it doesn't appeal to you at this point, it's almost like well, you're saying, what's the matter with me? All these people are going crazy, and it's a, it's New York City, it's fucking NBA arenas, and blah blah blah. As opposed to being in NBA arenas that are twenty percent full in Saskatoon. 